Hello everybody, Bart with Volaire Sim. Today a dreary and overcast day in Indianapolis and this is reflected in the Sim. And today I want to talk about the GNS 530, uh, what works and what doesn't work. Real Sim Gear uh, uh, introduced a beta plugin to allows that allows most of the buttons to work. So as far as they're concerned, they're providing the interface. But unfortunately, Flight Sim 2020 implementation leaves quite a bit to be desired and I'm just gonna go through it. it shows you what works and what doesn't. So let's get started. First of all, you notice that I finally got this um, um, display to stretch properly, meaning fill out the whole screen without the black bars on the sides. And how you do that is when you undock the display with the Alt key, just slide it and hit, hit Alt and Enter. Do not do any resizing. If you do any resizing, uh, it will it will basically not scale properly. Real Sim Gear um, explains this on their website, and so yeah, if you read carefully, you can you can figure this out. Now, as to what works and what doesn't, the Com uh, button seems to be working. I have this also matched up here, so you can see it a little better because the, the display, display is so bright that I, I'm sure I'm sure it will not show up very well on the camera. So notice. The comms are flipping properly. By the way, have the AI control, if you have the AI control turned, uh, let's see, manage radio comms, turn that off because if you have this turn on, it will not work properly. It'll drive you nuts and you will think something's not working correctly. So turn that off. Uh, same thing if you push uh, the, uh, this button, I'm gonna call this an inner button and, and switch between the nav section and the comm section, it works and then you can, uh, flip the nav, you can see that you can the nav um, selection works fine and you can of course flip this. All right, the CDI button here works so you can switch between GPS mode and VLAC mode. And now on to the uh, DME readout which is present on the GNS 530. By the way, I fly behind this uh, in, in my in my airplane, so I know this unit reasonably well, so I feel like I can I can talk somewhat intelligently about it. Of course, the ident buttons are inoperative, so you cannot really ident it using the the audio. But you can ident it if it's got a you know like a VOR. Then this is a way of identing it. You notice that um, it shows a VOR MIE that's Muncie VOR, and it says that we are on a two degree radial from that VOR. Well, that's and then 29 DME. Well, that's not right, unfortunately. If you look at the four flight and see where the airplane is, and Muncie VOR is right over there, you can see that this is about what? 240 radio. In fact, there's an airway go that goes 244 right here uh, on, on this kind of radio from the VOR. There's no way in hell you are on a three through radio from MIE. So something is not implemented correctly here. As corroborated by my HSI, you see, I'm in a, with a two indication with the, the tail of the, of the pointer pointing to about 240. So that, that, that shows that we are indeed on a 240 radial. Anyway, but that, that is not right, but that button switches again between GPS mode and VLOP, like in a real unit. The OBS is in up message does not really show any message. Flight plan seems to be working somewhat. I mean, the button shows the flight plan and the VNAV button doesn't work. And then procedure button, that's where the biggest disappointment because right now the airplane is flying say nowhere, right? I mean, there's no magenta line. So I'm gonna hit direct, which works. And I'm gonna tell it to fly to Indianapolis. And you know the shortcut in GNS 530, enter, enter, right? Act to activate it. Well, that doesn't work properly. Because you're supposed to hit enter, enter, and then it's supposed to activate it. Well, the thing doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to scroll it with the outer knob to activate and then activate it. And that should show a magenta line, and it does. And if I put it back into the GPS mode, um, I will... I would, and I put my autopilot on nav, it should start making a turn to follow the magenta line. All right, well now we are, uh, we are, as indicated here, going direct to Indianapolis. Well, so let's just say we wanted to fly a procedure. 
So we go select approach with an uh, uh, um, this outer knob. We select the approach, hit enter. Oh, so there are some approaches here after all. So now I'm supposed to go through the to the list of the uh, approaches, and let's just I select two, three left, enter, transition clang, and then load. What just happened? Well. In a, in a GNS 530, that should load that approach down below, and here nothing happens. And in fact, now I lost my, my magenta line and the airplane is flying nowhere. Uh, I don't even know where it's, what, what it's doing, because I got my autopilot turned on with a nav and altitude, but here it says that we're supposed to be flying to Indianapolis, but there's no magenta line anymore. So stuff like that. Um, so I'm not. Go I'm just gonna go through the rest of the buttons. The zoom works. Direct to, as I already showed, works. Except it doesn't show enter enter. Menu, you can change the fields. So that's good. There's some functionality there. I let's see if the clear button works. And you press push and hold clear. It should it should get you back to the menu. So I don't think that's implemented properly either. Um, yeah, because say like if you were to be in the, like somewhere deep buried into the uh, say approach menu or something like that, if you press and hold clear, okay, it gets you back to the right menu. But if you press and hold, it should get you back all the way to the home. That doesn't work either. So little things like well, I don't say little, big things are not working. And again, that's Microsoft Flight Sim. The other thing here now, look where we are with radio. We radial we are on all of a sudden. Minus 276 radial from Muncie. What the hell does that mean? What is the negative radial? There's no such concept that I know of at least. So, to sum up, uh, the buttons seem to be um, working from the standpoint they're actually communicating with the sim. So it looks like the real sim gear stuff is communicating properly. But the Microsoft Flight Sim team now needs to go back and start fixing all these bugs. They've, they've been doing these updates, right, every like couple of weeks. They need to spend a little bit more time now on the, uh, the GPS stuff. Because, let's face it, this GPS is, I still think, the most popular in terms of unit installed GPS in the world. So therefore there's tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these out there. Number one. And number two, people that are going to use the sim for instrument uh, practice, um, they need to have GPS stuff implemented on a basic level at least. Um, I don't, don't, all the deep menus don't have to be implemented. See, like this is probably fine, having at least the two screens on the nav mode. And then, see you have the w few of these other screens, like nearest mode, this is useful because if you want to go where the near, see where the nearest airport is or the nearest VOR and, and things like that. So that's all good that they have this, but guys, focus on the big things, approaches. By the way, you notice how this is like flashing? So there's a bug there too. All right, uh, so let's go back to the, nav, the main screen here. To sum up, not ready for prime time, not ready to be really be used for IFR practice because even you, even though if you're gonna just shoot approaches and you're gonna rely on this DME readouts, that's not gonna that's gonna show you bogus information. We've got pretty much everything else working on the sim, meaning the you know the autopilot's now behaving better and the gauges, the Logitech gauges are working. So this is kind of like the last thing. So guys, take a 172. That, that you have there with the steamies, let's fix that GPS, and then now we can then we'll be able to start using the GPS for instrument for VOR approaches, ILSs, which actually I haven't tried with this, but you know ILS, I presume it works because we just dial in the frequency, but the the, the DME stuff and then the RNAV or GPS approaches, which everybody flies those these days, so those need to be working properly. Thank you very much, very much for watching.